Hello all, in this video we will learn the remaining socket options of IPv6 and TCP socket options. The IPv6 socket options are the ones processed by the IP protocol version 6. The IPv6 checksum option which specifies the checksum offset of where is the offset located. If it is a non-negative number, the kernel itself will compute and verify the checksum. If it is minus 1, kernel does not compute or verify the checksum value. IPvc don't fragment. Now this option disables the automatic fragmentation of the segment of the message. Packets larger than, then what happens if the packets are larger than the maximum transfer unit? which is basically 1500 bytes in that case, that packets are dropped. IPv6 next, next hop option specifies the next hop address. IPv6 path MTU option retrieves the current path MTU. So what is the current value of MTU? IPv6 receive destination options returns the received destination option as ancillary data. Ancillary data is the additional data. IPv6 receive hop limit. This option returns the received hop limit just like the time to live in IPv4. IPv6 receive hop by hop options as ancillary data. Then we have IPv6 received path MTU. It returns the M path MTU as the ancillary data. IPv6 receive packet information and the arriving interface index of the destination are being returned. IPv6 receive routing header. The routing header is being re returned. The IPv6 traffic class is being returned. IPv6 unicast hops, it, this will set or retrieve default hop limit for the outgoing datagrams. I say that every datagram should not do more than 9. So either it is used to set this value or retrieve this value. IPv6 use minimum MTU. Setting this option avoids fragmentation. When this option is set to 1, it means that uh, packets are sent using the minimum MTU value. And if it is sent 0, where the MTU discovery to, all, to occur for all destinations. So you have to find out the MTU value for all the destinations. IPv6 V6 only option restricts the socket to IPv6 communication only, not for IPv4. So all these were the IPv6 option. Now let us look at the TCP socket options. There are two very important TCP socket options. They are TCP maximum segment size option, which will fetch or set the maximum segment size for a TCP connection. This maximum segment size is basically set during the synchronized segment exchange while we are establishing the communication between both the client and server. Then we have the TCP no delay uh, option, which is actually this option is used to disable the TCP's Nagel algorithm, which is enabled by default. This principle called as Nagling will be by default enabled. Now, if you would like to disable it, then we make use of the option TCP no delay. Now, what is the purpose of this option? See, for some applications, you need immediate packet transmission without waiting to accumulate data and then send. Okay, so but what Nagel algorithms tells? Let us understand the Nagel's algorithm to understand what is the purpose of TCP no delay. Nagel's algorithm idea is that if I will send first byte as a packet, I will wait for an acknowledgement. Okay, when I receive an acknowledgement, I will not send the other byte as a separate packet until I will accumulate enough amount of data. Once the enough amount of data has been accumulated, then I will send the next packet. So what I am basically doing, I am not transmitting data if I have small, small packets to send. I am accumulating more data and sending a larger packet. With this, I am solving the problem of traffic, congestion and all. But there is a possibility that there are some applications which would like to send the data, though it is very small, but they want to send it very often, not waiting for accumulation of data. That means I don't want to have delay, TCP no delay. I don't have 
want to have any delay between the first and the second packet sent. If you know about the uh, applications like Telnet and Remote Login, here every uh, keystroke will go as a packet. Every keystroke will be sent as a packet. We don't wait to accumulate the data. So in that case, you would like to disable the Nagel's algorithm and that uh, Nagel's algorithm is disabled using the option TCP no delay. So what is, uh, have a look on the Nagel's algorithm. It, uh, the basic idea of Nagel's algorithm is to reduce the number of small packets in the van. Okay, so the two common generators of small packets as I just said you are the uh, remote login and telnet clients because they would like to send each keystroke as a separate packet. In a fast LAN, we normally don't, do not notice a Nagel's algorithm because the time required for a small packet to be acknowledged is typically few milliseconds, far less than the time between two successive characters that we type. But in WAN, it near, takes nearly a second to acknowledge a small packet. So it is taking time to acknowledge a small packet. So we would not like to have that delay. And that delay is basically exaggerated, increased by Nagel's algorithm. So now let us consider if I am disabling the Nagel's algorithm, what will happen? I will send, if I would like to send this word hello, I will send H first, okay? And then I will send E. And then I am sending L. I am not waiting for the acknowledgement to come. Before that only, I am sending, uh, this is disabled. I am not waiting for the acknowledgement or I am not accumulating the data. As it, it is coming, I am sending. Okay, but when it comes to uh, Nagel's algorithm enabled, you are sending one packet and you will not send the further accumulated packets until you get an acknowledgement. You got an acknowledgement here and then you have sent the data that is accumulated. Again, you are have accumulated the data LO and you are not sending it until you get an acknowledgement. So this is the idea of Nagel's algorithm. This procedure is basically called as Nagling, uh, where if you want to disable this option, of nagging, then you make use of the TCP option that is TCP no delay. Okay, so this was all about your socket options in detail. We have the general socket options, we had IPv4 op uh, socket options, IPv6 socket options and TCP socket options. But let me tell you the general socket options that we have 13 socket options which we use on get, so get uh, socket options and set socket option function are very important for the exam. Thank you.